So this has been in my cancel pile for a few days. Uh, I almost let it go because time had passed, but I can't because there are things in life which are destined for the daily cancellation. This is one of them. It also fits in a nice kind of symmetrical way with what we talked about to start the show. Uh, the left trying to interpret world events through their very narrow insular lens. That brings us to Miss Nicole Hannah-Jones, who's the um, New York Times journalist who brought us the 1619 Project. She won a Pulitzer Prize for her work on that piece of thoroughly debunked agitprop. Because a Pulitzer these days is about as meaningful as a Teen Choice Award or a Nobel Prize. And maybe she'll win one of those awards or all three for her commentary on the Ukraine crisis. As far as that goes, Jones is in a little bit of a tough spot because her mind is a vehicle with only one gear. It's a menu with just one option, a buffet where every dish is the same. She has one setting, one lens for viewing the world, and it's the racialized lens of CRT. The problem is that a war between Ukrainians and Russians would seem to fall outside of the CRT framework. These are two groups of Europeans fighting in a region of the world 6,000 miles away. CRT has no insight to offer about such a conflict because CRT is, among other things, incredibly narrow and blinkered in its view of, the, of, of race and of the world. In fact, it basically ignores the entire rest of the world and pretends that everywhere is just like the modern United States. This is how CRT disciples can, for example, claim that non-white people cannot be racist because uh, racism is power plus prejudice and non-white people don't have institutional power which is obviously false even as it pertains to this country, but it's even more false across the mess, the rest, uh, much of the rest of the world, filled with countries where all of the institutional power is held by non-white people. There are no whites holding institutional power in China. Does that mean there's no racism in China? That would certainly come as a shock to anybody who's ever spent time in that country. But these are the, limita the limitations of the modern American race hustler. And it's why Jones had to struggle and stretch to find a way to make the Ukraine situation fit into her preconceived mold. And this was the best she could do. So in a series of tweets last week, Jones made the case that the concern for Ukraine in this country stems from anti-black racism. She tweeted, quote, every journalist covering Ukraine should really, really look internally. This is why I say we should stop pretending we have ob objectivity and instead acknowledge our biases so that we can report against them. Many of us see the racialized analysis and language. And honestly, these admissions of shock that this is happening in a European country are ahistorical and also serve to justify the lack of sympathy for other invasions, other occupations, and other refugee crises involving peoples not considered white. Now, don't, go, don't, don't worry, it gets much better. By that, I mean, by that, I mean worse. She says, what if I told you Europe is not a continent by definition, but a geopolitical fiction to separate it from Asia and so the alarm about a European or civilized or first world nation being invaded is a dog whistle to tell us that we should care because they're like us. To be clear, we should care about Ukraine, but not because it's European or the people appear white or that they're civilized and not impoverished. All people deserve to be free and to be welcomed when their countries are at war. Now, okay, let's first engage with this idea that Europe is not a continent. She would later go on to explain that, quote, the entire continent is either Asia or Eurasia, I suppose. That's not up to me. I'm just stating a fact about what defines a continent. Yeah, just stating facts, sure. The interesting thing about this fact is that it not only is not a fact, but even if it was a fact, it would still be totally irrelevant. Now, let's pretend for a moment that Europe isn't a continent. Okay, I mean, how does that at all impact, one way or another, the relevance of the war in Ukraine? But Europe is a continent, because a continent, by definition, is, quote, any of the world's main continuous expanses of land. Europe is one of the, the Earth's main continuous expanses of land, and so it's a continent. Now, perhaps she thinks that it's not a continent because it's, it's connected to other continents. But if that's the case, then the only pure continents in the world are, I guess, Australia and Antarctica. The rest of us exist in a giant, muddled mass of connecting expanses of dirt and rock. It's true that the lines distinguishing Europe from Asia were invented by human beings. The lines are drawn on a map. They aren't carved into the actual ground for the most part. But that doesn't make the lines fictional. I mean, dragons and unicorns are fictional. Europe is real. You, you can go visit it. I mean, there are certain parts of it that I would avoid for now, but you, you could go. Besides, if Europe is a fiction, then so is Africa. That continent and all of its countries have also been defined by lines that human beings have drawn. In this sense, race is kind of a fiction too. People have different skin colors in reality, but 
we as human beings are the ones who decided to label those colors and imbue them with deeper significance. Yet Nicole Hannah-Jones and her CRT comrades would say that it's racist to try and erase race in that way. It used to be considered progressive and politically correct to say that you're colorblind and uh, you you, you don't see race and race isn't real. That that used to be the the progressive thing to say. Now that is itself a racist claim according to the prophets of CRT. This is the problem with um, the people who go around labeling everything a social construct. They set the precedent that a thing is meaningless if it's a construct, but they're unwilling to apply that precedent consistently. So what about the rest of her claim? She says that we only care about Ukraine because uh, they're white. Well, that's clearly absurd. Just a few months ago, the big story was the situation in Afghanistan and the disaster that unfolded because of the way that Joe Biden handled the pullout there. People were quite concerned about the plight of Afghans who are not white. Now, it's true that the concern didn't seem to last that long. But it won't last in Ukraine either. People are led by the media to care about one thing and then another, then another. As the media jumps from one lily pad to the next. There's plenty to be said about this pattern of intense yet fleeting focus on one thing at a time in rapid succession. But you certainly can't call it racist. Now, since we're on the subject of prejudice, I should mention that this past weekend in D.C., a Russian restaurant called Russia House was vandalized and spray painted with anti-Russia messages. Meanwhile, people are dumping their vodka down the sink. Prominent members of Congress like Eric Swalwell have actually proposed rounding up all the Russian students in the United States and kicking them out. Listen to this. Congressman, you you say a pull from a menu of options, but we heard from a former DNI Clapper uh, less than an hour ago. It says uh, the time for, and I'm paraphrasing here, proportionality, incrementalism is over. We heard from the former Defense Secretary, uh, William Cohen, dump all the full gauntlet of potential sanctions on Putin. Why not do that? Everything we do has to be aligned uh, with our allies. And the fact that we were able to get the Germans to stop this pipeline, that's huge. That's U.S. leadership uh, on the international stage. Uh, and so we want to move with our allies in NATO, but also countries like Japan, who can you know, take quite uh, swift and severe actions against uh, Russia. But yes, on the table should be sanctioning Putin personally, uh, completely taking them out of the European and international banking system, which is known uh, as SWIFT. Frankly, I think closing their embassy in the United States, uh, kicking every Russian student out of the United States, uh, those should all be on the table. And Vladimir Putin needs to know every day that he is in Ukraine, uh, there are more severe options uh, that could come. Now, after 9-11, which was an attack on our actual country, We heard and have continued hearing quite a lot of outcry about alleged Islamophobia. After China unleashed a virus on the world that killed hundreds of thousands of our own people, there was an outcry against anti-Asian hate. Now, are we going to hear similar denouncements of anti-Russia hatred? Will the media follow these kinds of stories with the same feverish interest? Will people of Russian descent be granted victim class status? The answer is no, of course. How does that fit in with Nicole Hannah-Jones' theory? According to her narrative, discrimination against white people ought to provoke the the most outrage, given that she says we only care about white people. And yet the opposite proves true once again. That's because her narrative is divorced from reality entirely. She may not know much about geography, but we must admit that she is an expert on fiction. And that's why today, Nicole Hannah-Jones is once again canceled. Well, I hope you enjoyed that clip from The Matt Wall Show. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right down there so you can stay up to date on all of our future content.